Yeah, how many brake tests is this? 31 brake tests. We are going to talk in depth about the world's strongest climbing glue and bolt that we know of. This is a bolt in epoxy that we will be giving away. Now, ironically, this is a mechanical bolt, even though this episode is specifically about gluons, but anybody who opens up their email on Saturdays in September is eligible to win. It's that simple. We just want you to know what we've got coming out because not everything we have is video related. A lot of it is written content that we want to be able to update you on. Now, what's crazy about the episode you're about to see is that we tested over 30 glue and bolts, some of the strongest in the world. And so that is an enormous amount of work, probably over about a hundred man hours. And we weren't, didn't quite have all the answers yet. So we broke some more and then, and then we broke some more. And Bobby and I were like, oh my God, we never made an episode about it. And that's what you're about to watch. And I have a really cool surprise that I've been working on for two months that I am only going to tell my email list for a little while. So make sure you go sign up. This is the twist bolt from boltproducts.com. And Jim Tit makes these in an eight millimeter stock rod and six millimeter stock rod. This is rated at 79 kilonewtons, which I believe is rated to be the strongest bolt around for climbing. We did a lot of tests over the last few years and actually never made any videos about this, which is a shame because it takes like a hundred man hours in order to get the information that we have on the book and numbers in the bolting Bible. And these are my favorite bolts. When people ask, what bolts do you use? What do you recommend? These are the ones that I generally recommend because they don't have any welds that could be a problem on some bolts. They fit very nicely in the hole that they say they're going to fit into with a little bit of interference so they don't like ooze out while the glue dries and they're a pretty reasonable price. I've probably put in 600 of these or those. Yeah, so uh, this is gonna be awesome video if you trust your life to bolts and you see these around. They're both stainless. And that's important that you use stainless if you have a bolt outside. These are both 316L stainless, I believe. So as you'll see in the brake test we have, epoxy or glue doesn't uh, stick to metal, at least stainless. It, it will slide right off if this was a smooth shaft. The benefits to having it twisted is you have a bunch of grooves and stuff in order for it to grab in order to uh, get the most strength. And this is a pretty simple and efficient way to get all of those um, points where it can connect. Usually you'll see in a glue and bolt or in a U-shaped staples, they'll have little notches they've cut and grooved in, which some people debate if that compromises the strength. If done well, it doesn't, but there's a lot of ways you could do it that would compromise the strength. Everything we've tested, except for the fringes of stuff you're not supposed to do, is super good enough. And it's nice to know that when you trust your life to a uh, super good enough looking bolt, that it probably is. Now, if you're using stainless near the ocean, it could look safe and be corroding right here and just snap off under body weight but that's where you're supposed to use titanium. We have been working on the bolting Bible for weeks now, or technically last two years, we've been trying to improve it. If you haven't seen that thing recently, please go check it out. It's got all the different sports segregated now, so you can see what's specific to you. And the Old Testament is all the general stuff you need to know about bolts. And if you trust your life to bolts, I think it's worth skimming over for an hour. It's free, and I think you'll learn a lot. So the first test we're going to talk about is six millimeter, or the smaller ones that are 100 millimeters long or six inches? Four. Four inches. They're rated for 40 kilonewtons. Your carabiners you're clipping to are only rated for 20-ish. So all of this is super good enough, but it's interesting how they fail. And I think that's important because that one number is just a little piece of what can happen depending on what you're doing with these. And let's just cover this real quick. Yes, some bolts get pulled in tension. Climbers think they're only being pulled down. There are roofs you can stick it in. There are highliners that are highlining in the middle of a cliff, pulling it straight out. Cavers are trying to get the ropes not to rub rocks. So it's not as common, but they can be pulled in tension. Anyways, we get very different numbers when we do that. So in concrete, we pulled in tension and we got 37.32, 41.92, and the load cell was off for the last one, but it broke like the others. <laughs> and the concrete failed. This was well-aged concrete. It was a driveway that was about to come out. But you can see after the concrete spalls or 
breaks near the top, that the bolt is coming out with a twisting action because the metal is no longer engaged in the epoxy and it's kind of unscrewing itself. Even with that, it's not like once you get one turn, you can just pull the bolt out. It still takes force. You have to maintain an unreasonably high force in order to get it to ultimately fail. And the way you've set your anchor has to be able to freely twist. It's just interesting. When we pulled these same six millimeters in concrete with Liquid Rock 500, but in shear, we were getting 39.52. 37.52 and 39.64 and then the bolt failed on each one of them. For these tests we used a soft shackle because it's the strongest thing we could think of and we were having lots of problems with quick links seizing not being usable we had to cut them off. Uh, what's interesting no matter what you pull it with if the rock or the glue doesn't fail they fail here and that's we've seen with all of these p-shaped glue ends that don't have welds this is the point that fails. There's no weak point back here. It's literally gonna pull through the metal. We are learning a lot of other things other than just about these bolts. Quick links will break around 60 kilonewtons, but you're not gonna open them if you take it up to 20. And so that really wasn't the right tool to be using. And soft shackles, I love soft shackles. And they're in theory strong, but you'll see soon those started to break. So the next tests we did were these eight millimeter big boys, and they're rated for 79 kilonewtons. That's a lot. What is that in English? 17,759 freedom units. Did we get 79 kilonewtons? Well, no, is the short answer. Let's talk about that. Uh, we were actually, because this is the strongest bolt, we're curious about different glue types. So when we started testing these, we actually had liquid rock 500, which is an epoxy, AC100, which is a polyester? Vinyl ester. Vinyl ester. And we had Simpson XP, which is also an epoxy. And we're more or less shit testing the glues, but we learned a lot about these. And that's what we're focused on right now. When we did the tension tests again with Liquid Rock 500, with the big ones, just like the six millimeter ones, it was pulling out. It would damage the concrete a bit, but then it would start to spin out of the hole. And we were getting between 45 to almost 52 kilonewtons when it would disengage, which is a little bit more than we were getting with the six millimeters, more contact surface area. We did those same tests with AC100, um, which is generally considered to be a little bit weaker, but still super good enough for most things. And yeah. we got a wide range, um, 42 kilonewtons all the way up to 64 kilonewtons. A wide range on what, Bobby? Not the bolt. <laughs> On our soft shackles. <laughs> we learned about in. we learned about soft shackles. Yeah. And how good AC100 can be, especially when pulling in shear. Yeah. So, so we were struggling on how to break these because they were in the driveway still. <laughs> a, a note about breaking these bolts is we put in this glue the day before, and it was summertime, is warm out, so the glue's cured. But we have to like predetermine like what we're gonna break. And usually you find out information as you go and that steers what you're gonna do next. We just put all these in and had to come back the next day and break. So we had Simpson XP, we, we also tested in shear because we had basically four of these. The two that we did in Simpson XP, the bolt failed. We got the bolt to finally fail at 54.60. The other one broke at 57.96, broke our soft shackle. So test 54 went higher but we kind of break the bolt. We had Hilti V3 500 that we wanted to test, which is one of the nicer glues out there. It's that red one. And in tension, it was disengaging from the bolt at 41 to 44 kilonewtons, which is a little bit less than we got on Liquid Rock 500. Oh yeah, consistently. Liquid Rock 500 is cheaper. We'll work with a normal uh, caulk gun instead of the fancy gun that you need for the Hilti V3 500. Yeah. So in the granite, we were curious. We tested a dirty hole. We're gonna be pulling in shear with a big bolt with great glue, good rock. But we're not gonna clean the hole. So what we did, we just drilled it, pulled the drill bit out, uh, no brushing, no blowing, nothing. Squirted the glue in, put the bolt in. Which is taboo. You're supposed to clean the hole. So the glue can adhere to the side of the, the rock. Uh, we just wanted to see what would happen. Uh, oh, everything we connected to it failed. <laughs> what else is there to say about that? We broke like $200 worth of gear trying to get those three bolts to break. 
pretty frustrating. Mm -hmm. But something to note is we did get up to 67, kill, 68 technically, kill in engines, and all the way down to 50 of where the range of our stuff was breaking. So it was breaking higher than the one that we did actually get to break up to this point in our story of 55 kilonewtons. It's a big range. It's not just like a carabiner's usually consistent yeah. in when it breaks. But all of those numbers are massively overkill for climbing. Or any sport. This is a chain shackle. It's U-shaped with a bolt going through it. And this doesn't deform like a quick link at the forces that we're taking it. And that's really nice to know since we were going to test all of these in sandstone and I really didn't want the same thing to happen when we were in the granite. Sandstone is a softer rock and that is really nice to know if these longer gluon bolts are going to perform really well in softer rock since that's where they shine. You can use a wedge bolt in hard rock, but well, you'll have to see the video on how those did in sandstone as well. But when you're using a big bolt in a long, deep 150 millimeter hole, you're not doing it for the strength of the bolt in this case, you're doing it in order to get more contact area around the rock and you're able to hold more rock. Because you can see that when we pulled these in tension, the 100 millimeter ones, that it was sort of disengaging from the glue, but it was mostly a rock failure still around that 42 or 46 kilonewton range with the Hilti V3 500 that we used. No, it, yeah, no, it twisted twice. It went pop, pop, and then broke all the and, rock. And then the rock just totally fell yeah. around it. Wow. So it was a combination between yeah. the this getting disengaged from the glue or epoxy and the rock failing. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see that the rock will fail and you can see that it spreads out over quite, a, quite an area. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why you don't put them right next to each other. You have them well, the bigger they are, the longer they are, the more you're going to want to spread them out. If your bolts are too far apart, then it kind of makes it weird to build an anchor because then your angle's really big or you have to make it really long and sometimes there's a stance there that you actually want to be on. Uh, we also tested these in shear and we were able to get the bolt to fail, which is nice to know that only the 100 millimeter was necessary in this Wingate sandstone in Moab. There's a lot of different kinds of sandstones out there. There's a lot of different kinds of sandstones just in Moab. And Zion has a softer sandstone. It's going to perform differently there. This is just nice to see in one area what's happening at some crazy high forces. The first one we tested, we did get 70, almost 72 kilonewtons. Not quite 79, but it is still pretty damn high. The next two were quite different, 58 and 66. It's quite a range. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes when we test metal products, we're typically able to get a really consistent result within a small narrow of window. It's soft goods that I usually get this big of a range. I'm not a metallurgist. I'm not a metallurgist, but from what I understand, talking to people that know way more than I do, um, a lot of it has to do with the speed that you're pulling, especially when you get into higher forces. Um, and if you let it rest and there's work hardening involved, um, but if you know more, tell us in the comments below. Yeah, let's make the comments a super useful uh, part of this video for anybody who wants to get into the weeds can totally. read through those. Mm -hmm. Now, how I believe, no one's just making numbers up. There's a reason there's an MBS number, right? So boltproducts.com has 79 kilonewtons on these and Gemtech can get those numbers. Uh, we're not pulling it the same way he's pulling it. I don't know what size uh, shackle he's using. There's go with anything smaller or bigger. I don't know. But uh, how I believe he might be able to get that is pull it really hard, eight kilonewtons maybe, over and over, maybe eight times, and then slowly pulling it. So actually that'd be that way. But how you pull this will generate different results. But what's interesting to me is how different my results are pulling at the same speed from zero to ultimate failure. I don't know. None of those numbers matter because they're twice as strong as the carabiner. So much higher than anything else in the system. Oh, we yeah. have a video of Bobby installing these uh, top down bolting where he repelled and installed these. And that was in volcanic Brescia five or six years ago before I knew Ryan and before we'd done all these tests. Uh, I wanted to make sure I had a good bolt. So I bought these. After I did the test, after I'd bought 300 of them, I realized, <laughs> whoa, these are definitely overkill for how good my rock is. 
Uh, so now I use these, but in the anchors in that video, um, I'm still using these because I have a lot of them. So with two of them, you have a 100 to 150 kilonewton anchor if you go climb on those. You can equalize it with a span set. <laughs> <laughs> I also tested these longer ones, 150 millimeter in tension, and twisted out of the rock at 53, 49, and 54 kilonewtons. So we did get a higher result with the longer bolt. Mm. I couldn't pull them fully, fully out. They were disengaged from the rock, but... Uh, yeah, I only have like that much stroke in that tension setup we have. What happens if the sandstone's wet? And that is a big concern. Uh, you shouldn't be climbing sandstone if it's freshly been raining because you could damage the features. And That's in the southwest. There are many areas with harder sandstone, like such as the southeast, where it's generally not a problem. Yeah, so be mindful of that. And disclaimers, we tested wet sandstone because I tested these in Waco's where I could pour the water and let it sit for one to two days, put the Hilti V3 500 in the night before on a 30 degree night. Like I was kind of crunching to get this thing done and uh, the numbers are pretty impressive. The shorter 100 millimeter bolts in wet sandstone, the bolt failed on one of them at 68 kilonewtons and then the other one pulled out at 64. The longer 150 millimeter bolts also broke at 68 kilonewtons and then at 65, but it did not pull out. So our lowest result was 54 when we got the bolt to actually break on these eight millimeters. And the highest was 72 and a whole bunch of 60s. Super good enough. It's not 79 though, which is funny. 